In this question, they're asking us to calculate the uh, integra integral from negative infinity to infinity of x cubed e to the negative x to the power of 4 with respect to x. Uh, this is an improper integral because not only is there one uh, infinity symbol in one of the bounds of our integration, but there's actually two. So both ends of our uh, integral uh, have infinity signs in them. So we, we need to treat this as an improper inter integration, and we need to be very careful about how we do this. So um, because we have a in infinite bounds on both ends, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the property of uh, definite integrals to split this up into two separate um, integrations. So rather than do the full integration from negative infinity to infinity, what we're going to actually do is we're going to split this up into uh, an integration from negative infinity to zero, uh, x cubed e to the negative x to the power of four dx, plus, and then we're going to finish the integration by going from zero to infinity, of x uh, cubed e to the negative x to the power of 4 dx. Uh, why would we split it up this way? Uh, the reason we want to split it up this way is because we only know how to deal with uh, improper integrals when there is only one infinity in the bounds. Um, we were given two infinities in the bounds, one on each end. Uh, so what we did was we separated this using the properties of definite integration. We're allowed to separate this uh, however we choose. Uh, so we chose to separate this at x equals 0. Um, and that allowed us to actually break this up into two different integrations with only one infinity in each of the uh, in, uh, in each of the integrations. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat this uh, as maybe say integral one. I'm going to call this integral one. I'm going to call this integral two. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to run off and calculate each of these integrations on their own separately as their own improper integration. And then at the end of the day, I'm just going to plug in uh, my value for integration one, uh, my value for integral two, uh, back into this, uh, add them together, and then I'm done. So I'm all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go off and calculate each of these integrals all by themselves. So let's take a look at I1. Uh, so I1 is the improper integral from in negative infinity to zero of x cubed e to the negative x to the power of four dx. And of course, I need to remind myself of what that actually means. That is the limit as n goes to negative infinity of the integral from n to zero of my integrand x cubed e to the negative x to the power of four dx. Uh, so of course, this is what it means uh, to have an infinity in the bottom. Uh, we replace it by uh, some number n and then at the end of our calculation, we'll let n go to negative infinity. So now this just becomes a definite integral, something that we have tools for. Um, but I, off the top of my head, I don't really know what this antiderivative is, so I'm gonna have to use some method to actually calculate uh, this antiderivative. So maybe I'll use uh, integration by parts, maybe I'll use substitution. Um, I think substitution might be a good idea because if I substituted, um, say, u is x to the power of four, um, the derivative of that involves x to the power of three. And I have x to the power of three sitting right out in front here, so that's probably a good idea. So what I'm gonna do in this is I'm gonna let u is uh, equal to x to the power of four, so I'm gonna use substitution method. Of course, then I can calculate du by dx, which is just equal to four x to the power of three. And uh, if I pretend this is a fraction, which it's not, but if I pretend, if I pretend like it's a fraction, uh, it actually helps me calculate the right answer. Uh, it allows me to say that uh, du is equal to 4x cubed times dx. And of course, that means that dx is equal to 1 over 4x cubed times du. So I've actually been able to, quote unquote, solve for dx uh, in this way. Um, I should also calculate what my uh, bounds are going to be. My integration, my original integration was in terms of x. I want to put it in terms of u. Um, so when x is equal to n, so the bottom, uh, when x is equal to n, what is u equal to? u is equal to, well, let me see, when I plug in n into uh, my definition of u, when I plug in n for x, I get u is equal to n to the power of 4. Great. Um, so uh, when x is equal to n, u is equal to n to the power of 4, and when x is equal to my other bound, now we're going to x equals zero in this case. When x is equal to zero, that means that u is equal to, well, let me see here. When x is equal to zero, plug in zero, and for x, I get u is equal to zero. So now I have all the pieces that I need to actually go and do this uh, substitution method. So I'm still gonna have limit as n goes to negative infinity. I haven't really touched this. Uh, we'll just do that at the end. But now my new integral in terms of u goes from 
um, when x was equal to n, my u version of this integration will start at n to the power of 4. And my u version of the other endpoint is u is equal to 0. Of course, I have x cubed here. That hasn't really changed. But I have e to the negative u now, because uh, x to the power of 4 is what we decided to call u. Uh, dx, I know what dx is in terms of du. If I look over here, I have dx is equal to 1 over 4 uh, x cubed. So this is dx is actually just, I can replace it by 4x cubed times du. And this is good news because this x cubed cancels with this x cubed. And uh, this 1 quarter can come out in front. So I'm just limit, left with the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, 1 quarter of the definite integral from u equals n to the power of 4 to u equals 0, e to the power of negative u du. And this, uh, I can now calculate this definite integral because I know the antiderivative of e to the negative u. Uh, still haven't done anything with this limit yet. We'll just handle it at the end. This is 1 quarter. And now I can do this antiderivative. Uh, the antiderivative of e to the power of negative u is negative e to the power of negative u. And I'm going to evaluate that from n to the power of 4 until 0. This 1 quarter can is just a number and doesn't uh, this limit doesn't really care about this this constant so I can actually pull it out front 1 quarter limit as n goes to infinity and now let's plug in our endpoints uh, let's plug in 0 this is negative e to the negative 0 minus what I get when I plug in the bottom endpoint which is n to the power 4 minus negative e to the negative n to the power 4 and uh, if I clean this up a little bit, that's 1 quarter. Uh, the limit as n goes to uh, negative infinity. I forgot these negative infinities, so let me go put them back in. Negative infinity, negative infinity, negative infinity. Uh, OK, uh, e to the power of 0 is just 1. Um, and this negative times a negative becomes a positive. So I can just rearrange what's in the brackets as um, e to the power of negative n to the power of 4 minus e to the power of 0 is 1 minus 1. Now let's take a look at this, at this limit. I want to do this limit now. Um, if I take a look at, at this limit, um, as n gets really, really negative, so negative a million, negative a billion, negative a trillion, what happens when I, these numbers go into e to the power of negative n to the power of 4? Well, um, it's going to get really, really big, obviously. Uh, a billion, a trillion, whatever, um, to the power of 4 is going to get really, 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 really big. Um, but is it going to be a, a big positive or a big negative number? Well, uh, I have negative n. n is always always negative, but a negative to the power of 4 is a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So n to the power of 4, no matter what, uh, how, how negative I put in n, n to the power of 4 is always going to be a really, really large positive number. And of course, then when I multiply it by the negative sticking out front here, the, the thing in the exponent here is going to be a very, very large negative number. And e to the power of a, ne a very, very large negative number goes to 0. Um, so this is going to go to 0 when I take the limit. And all I'm left with is the limit as n goes to negative infinity of this thing is just negative 1. The negative 1 times this 1 quarter out front uh, just leaves me with the answer of negative 1 quarter. So at the end of the day, uh, integral 1. Uh, after all our work here is equal to negative one quarter. So this first part is equal to negative one quarter. So now I have to run off and do uh, what this integral two is. And the integral two is going to be the exact same thing. So um, I'll go through it quite quickly. Integral two is just the integral from zero to infinity of the same thing. Okay, so if we go in here and we do the integral from zero to infinity of x to the power of 3e to the negative x to the power of 4 dx. Um, I might run into myself here a little bit. So I think I'll just draw a straight line here. So this is the second part. Uh, it's an improper integral because we have this infinity up there. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I always do with improper integrals. I'm going to replace it. I'm going to replace the infinity by n, and then I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity at the end of the calculation. This is x cubed e to the negative x to the power of 4 dx. And what I'm going to do is by the exact same u substitution as we had up here, I'm going to substitute in u equals x to the power of 4. This is the exact same question. Um, I'm going to let u equal x to the power of 4. 
um, what I end up with is the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, the exact same thing from 0 to n, n to the power of 4 x cubed e to the negative u and then the dx again is going to be 1 over 4 x cubed du that x cubed is going to cancel out with that x cubed and at the end of the day I'm going to have the limit this is going to become the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from 0 uh, there's going to be a 1 quarter out here 0 to n to the power of 4 e to the negative u du okay uh, so let's actually do this that definite integration now nothing is happening with this limit we'll just leave it there uh, actually we can take that one quarter out front of the limit because uh, the limit doesn't really care about this number it has nothing to do with n um, the antiderivative of e to the negative u as we calculated above is negative e to the negative u and I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to n to the power of 4 so that just becomes one quarter limit as n goes to infinity uh, so actually let's plug in our endpoints here um, let's plug in n to the power of 4 this becomes negative e to the negative n to the power of 4 minus what we get when we plug in 0 which is negative e to the negative 0 uh, and that is equal to uh, equal to 1 quarter limit as n goes to infinity of let's take a look at this um, this becomes um, negative times negative 1 because e to the power of e to the power of 0 is just 1 so this becomes negative negative 1 so that's positive 1 it becomes 1 minus e to the negative n to the power of 4. Now if we look at this for the exact same reason that we had up in the previous integration, as n gets really, really large, um, n to the power of 4 obviously gets really, really large, and then we have a negative in front of it. So the thing that's going into the exponent of this exponential function, e to the power, the, the power is actually becoming a very, very large negative number, which means as, as n gets larger and larger and larger, this goes to 0. Uh, so all we're left with is 1 quarter times 1, which is 1 quarter. So that's integral 2. Um, so I'm just going to make a note here, substitution method. Same substitution. So now I have inter integral 1 after all this work was negative a quarter. Integral 2 after all that work is positive a quarter. So our final question was uh, that what is the integral from negative infinity to infinity x cubed uh, e to the power of uh, x negative x to the power of 4 dx well that was just integral 1 plus integral 2 which we just solved was 1 quarter negative 1 quarter plus 1 quarter integral 1 was negative a quarter integral 2 was positive a quarter and if we add these two things together at the end of the day we get 0 uh, so at the end of the day, uh, the integration from, or the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x cubed e to the negative x to the power of 4 dx is just zero.